how do collaborative things, robots, humans, decide? We have come up to very fundamental new mathematics about how we decide collectively, what kind of probability models we use, how do we collaborate, why we collaborate, what is the role of trust and all that. Okay? So these are extremely important problems that they face robots, human robots, human and robots collaborating, even humans by themselves decide. The main mission of the Maryland Robotics Center is to advance robotic systems, the underlying component technologies and applications of robotic systems through research and education that is interdisciplinary in nature and based on a systems approach. We bring to the center a systems thinking. We try to think of robots as a wholesome and not a particular piece at the time. The Fearless Flight Facility is a unique facility adjacent to campus that allows us to fly drones outdoors to investigate autonomous path planning and swarming. We do a lot of test flights out there. Um, whatever our students are working on in terms of programming or algorithms, we actually get to test that and fly that on real vehicles. So in this research, we are using uh, swarms of autonomous quad rotors to map and search an urban environment. So the autonomous quad rotors, as they fly around, they collect uh, sensor data, which we simulate. And the sensor data consists of uh, a road network representing the urban environment. So they continuously map the environment and search for moving uh, vehicles or people uh, with the hope that this type of technology could be used for search and rescue applications. When most people hear the term robot, typically they're thinking of something like the Terminator something made of metal that's powered using electronics. But recently there's been a shift towards this new type of robot, soft robots, which typically consist of flexible materials that are controlled using fluids or air. In the Bio-Inspired Advanced Manufacturing Lab, or the BAM Lab, we try to use micro and nanoscale 3D printing technologies to solve biomedical challenges. And so in the context of robotics, we're trying to create an entirely new generation of soft prosthetics that are built using 3D printing. The future of this research field is basically to see how we can create new 3D printing strategies to make it easier to build increasingly complex but highly functional soft robotic systems without the time, labor, or the costs that we've historically seen. The work we do here with my, with my group, in particular my students, is kind of unique and important because we bring a unique perspective into robotics. We try to think of robots, whether they are one or several, as a system. And we try to, to, to have this wholesome approach to the design of the robots, to the evaluation, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of unique. Drone racing is exactly as it sounds. Uh, pilots fly drones as quickly as they can through a series of gates. Uh, we are trying to do it autonomously, so without the help of any pilots, we press go and the drones just fly. The EREB Drone Lab is a brand new shared lab that allows us to study aerial robotics using motion capture cameras. Oh, the future of drone racing is really exciting. Um, it involves a lot of cheaper sensors, so we can actually do a lot of really cool vision-based algorithms, which means that the drone can see things, can process things very fast, um, which means that the drones can, can go through narrow openings, can um, maneuver uh, and outrace other drones. So um, it sounds very cool, um, and within an academic setting, it's really great, but the applications for it in the real world are really um, exciting as well, from search and rescue to um, monitoring fires to um, uh, medical assistance. In the space community, people have called things robots for years, but all they mean by that is there's no human on board. But what we're doing is space robotics in a more traditional sense of robotics, which means we want to reach out and interact with the environment. We're trying to build robotic systems that can repair satellites, build bases on the moon, or explore Mars. The Neutral Buoyancy Research Facility is the largest underwater research facility on a university campus and the only one equipped with underwater motion capture. This is where we study autonomous underwater robots and space systems using the underwater domain to simulate microgravity. If you want to understand how to do useful work in space, you need to be able to recreate space on Earth. 
and particularly for the kinds of work we do, building stuff and so forth, we need to have weightlessness or a reasonable facsimile of weightlessness. Neutral buoyancy is where we go underwater and carefully adjust ballast so things don't float and they don't sink. So it's like being weightless. What we have here is a tank that's 50 feet across and 25 feet deep, and we use it to simulate space. There are only six tanks like this in the world. This is the only neutral buoyancy facility in the world on a university campus, and it's one of only two active facilities in the United States. So we're very pleased to have this unique facility. We put our robots in the water. We actually put people in the water, either um, directly as if they were inside a habitat or wearing spacesuits. And they work with the robots, and we try to understand how best to collaborate with humans and robots working together to try to plan out what the future is going to look like in space. We try to teach robots, not program them, to teach them tasks. Because if you program them, then there are errors. And if you change the environment, they are not going to do it again. So the logic behind this work is kind of unique. We're trying to do like humans. We try to, under to understand what is the logic of the task. Then we introduce in the computer of the robot the logic of the task. The robot, we assume, knows its embodiment, knows how to move around like you and I do, and it has its sensors. And then we execute a planning algorithm. And this way we have been able to show that once you learn a task, you can give it to a different robot, it can execute the task in a different environment than where it learned and all that stuff. Which all these are very important for trying to increase the capabilities of robots and the way to interact with humans. One of the unique things about this laboratory is everything you see here is designed and built here almost entirely by the students. So if you look at a robot arm like this that was originally developed to fly in the space shuttle, it was developed by students and we still operate it using graduate students and undergraduates. We have graduate students, we have undergraduate students, we even have high school students often to come here and do work with us. Students are the ones who are actually executing, so they're the ones who actually know what's going on, how to fix things when I break them, um, and actually are the ones who are, who are executing. The Maryland Robotics will soon be introducing an undergraduate minor degree in robotics that will allow our undergraduate students to engage in the Robotics Center by taking advanced coursework to supplement their degree.